Okay, 4th of February, and we've cleared up all the brash for now on this bit. Chuck some logs downhill. Basically, every time you uh, cut a log, you can chuck it down, and the more times you chuck it down the hill, it's less work, or well, feels like less work, coming all the way up here with the mule. So, yeah, chucked it all down there. That's where the dead hedge is. Just felled that one, which we needed the rope for. That's where that is. But the next one is that one. See, it was a little tuft where well, it looks like some squirrel started to dry up in the top. And you can see what's happening to it. It's in the dead hedge. So it's best to do it now rather than leave it till year after next. Because then the dead hedge will be in the way and be difficult to fell. And you can see it's leaning completely away from this year's cant. But it's clear, it's not hung up, and there's a nice fork up there. So we'll get the rope up there, and that'll be quite easy. And then we'll take the rope down there and we'll make it off. I won't be able to pull it over just on my own because I'm a, a little guy. But I'll show you a trick and we'll do a three to one mechanical advantage. And that'll tug over downhill right nicely. And what we might do is bias the cut a little bit. So it comes towards us here, rather than straight against the lean. And it will go on or nearly by the dead hedge. That'll be the plan. Anyway, I'm expecting someone to call me. And after that, we'll set up. And then we'll fell that. And we'll see if it works. And I'll show you the, the little three to one. See you in a bit. Okay, we've got you set up, a rope set up, and you can probably see if I leave you at that. But let's show you this rope set up. It's up in the tree, in that nice fork which is round the back, and that went up first time, honest gov. And here, there's some tension on this rope. And here we have a shackle, D shackle. An alpine butterfly knot there. And then the rope runs through. And it's on a half hitch there. So you can just pull it and it comes free. Down here we have a, a one ton. Oh, two ton. Thing in my jig. What's it called? Strop. And a carabiner, which is a steel one. There's so many kilonewtons, etc. So the idea is we put the bird's mouth in and the felling cut and then we tug on it and you've got a three to one mechanical advantage. So the line you're pulling on and the two lines here between the pulleys. These aren't pulleys so you lose a bit on friction but if you just go straight through the uh, on the butterfly straight around the tree you lose more on friction and you abrade your rope which is getting a bit long in the tooth anyway so three to one advantage so I'll put you on the post and we'll go and fell it and then we'll talk about it later if it works See everything right hope you don't get twatted if it goes a little bit wrong you're within twatting range but um, hopefully not
right, groovy. There you go. Nice and close to the dead hedge. And all your material is downhill. Plan B would have just to knock it over in there and it would have got caught up and you'd have to wrestle it all out individually. But you can see how this worked. I wasn't even pulling on that very hard. Now if you go on an assisted fell course, they teach you that all your kit has got to be Lola approved. Lifting of loads and something regulations. I've been on the course, but they also teach you to go up two and a half metres and then put your winch on. But by going right up to the top, your mechanical advantage is greater and you're pulling a lot less load. And also Lola applies to lifting. We're not lifting, we're pulling. So this rope, which would no way pass a Lola test, half of it come off the uh, um, beach at uh, Castle Cove down on Portland and half of it was in 12 metres of water on the artificial reef in Pool Bay and it's got a splice in the middle which reduces the strength of the rope but the maximum that I can pull is one old geezer weight so I'm fairly small, I'm 5 foot 8 and I weigh about 12 and a half stone so I can pull, if I really go at it, maybe 120 pounds and then I'm running out of traction. But three to one, multiply that by three, that's 360 pounds. But I was pulling a lot less than that by pulling that over. Because you're not seeing the full weight of that, which maybe if you add it all up, goes a ton, ton and a bit. You also, by cutting low to the ground, not at waist height or anything silly, you're not detracting from your mechanical advantage. So there's your hinge, there's your bird's mouth, and that was at a big angle. Your back cut and your step to stop it slipping back. You see it? So that comes over. That could have been a little bit wider because it actually uh, closed up and it popped off and then it slid downhill so that doesn't actually matter i got exactly the result i wanted the other thing to notice is i cleared up all the rubbish so that when i walked out i was keeping a good eye on the thing even though it had sat back and it was retained by the rope I was keeping a good eye on it so it didn't fall over and twat me and I've got a nice clean route to walk out on when I was pulling I was over here and I watched it come down and I moved away from it and I didn't turn me back on it once it started moving so that's how it is right three to one if that's your we call it a pulley you know it's a shackle and a pulley down there. If you're pulling on a rope straight, there's no mechanical advantage. If you put it round a pulley, you don't get two to one, you're just changing the direction. But if you put in another pulley, a second pulley, then you make you calculate your mechanical advantage by counting the, the falls, the bits of rope. One, two, three. Yep, one, two, three. If you put another two in, you can get a five to one. As we go back to the tree, back up here, and you'd have five. You don't get two to one or four to one, it's three or five, as I understand it. What I wouldn't do is do that in any place where it mattered if it went wrong. If I couldn't have pulled that, or it had gone to either side, then I'd have just got it hung up. I wouldn't have hit a house or a car, or put it over a bridleway, or into a road, or anything like that. So if you're felling in a place where the result matters, 
if it goes wrong. Then you have to go Lola test and the full Monty. But for work like this, you can do things like that. That wasn't training, it's just what I do, it's to show you what is possible. That came out the road several years ago, so that now wouldn't pass a load of test because they have uh, dates on them. Rope wouldn't pass. That was from a car boot sale, it was a quid, it's a steel one. And it is actually marked, it's not a cheap one. Uh, 500 kilograms. There's no way I can pull five, but five times 2.2 .2 pounds. Or oh, sorry, 500 times 2.2 .2 pounds. So that's well within its limit. And the same with that. So, fell in with rope assist and a three to one advantage. Next one to fell is gonna be that one, which is also leaning away. But I'll probably fell that one that way. I'll put the rope up it, but might not need it. Right, let's go and sned this one up. Hope that was interesting. Right, 4th of Feb. I've had enough for the day. And uh, that's what it looks like now. All the stools at the top end are done. So I have counted. That leaves 10 still to do on our right. Over there. All that timber to move. More than I thought there was going to be. That's not necessarily a bad thing. And that dead hedge at the top built most of it today. It's right at this end, but the far end it's really low, really thin. So I'm going to have to drag a load 